Hi, my name is Chaser Johnson. I'm the co-founder of the Stock Boss Up app and StockTeamUp.com. I'm here again with Jeff. Today, we're going to be speaking about esports, gambling, and all the stocks related to them. Jeff, thanks again for, for joining me. Thanks, Chaster. Um, hello to everyone out there. So, you know, Chaster, um, there's a lot of people who have been uh, moving into like esports and gaming, uh, you know, as and more and more states adopt some form of legalized sports betting. You know, COVID obviously put a huge crimp in that, um, you know, over the last year. Or so we're sitting here beginning of 2021. Um, but those stocks, some of those stocks really did well. So, you know, some of the household names, if there are any household names in, in this area, are, are um, DraftKings and Penn, which um, is an interesting company because I think Penn has both physical casinos, but also the gaming platform and companies like MGM, which of course have the big, you know, casinos that, that everyone knows, but also has the gaming infrastructure. There's also some ETFs now too, which I've seen like BETS, which is B-E-T-Z, uh, which is a esports and gaming um ETF and there's some other you know companies who are maybe not household names that have have really gone up over the last year and that's why there hasn't been sports um, you know so as we've all heard probably over the last year how people have if without their sports they you know got Robin Hood accounts and started trading the market it'll be interesting when sports comes back you know and I don't know if we're going to have March Madness this year right that's a huge um, that's a huge gaming opportunity. As of now, it's going to be in Indianapolis. Um, it turns out that's where <laughs> NCAA is headquartered, and they're going to have the whole March Madness right now, as of as of today, here in Indianapolis. I'm in Indianapolis for anyone watching. <laughs> Indeed. So, so yeah. So so moving beyond that, you know, moving into the baseball season, which apparently baseball, I won't, I don't know if it's eclipsed football, but but during the pandemic, people were betting on baseball even more than football. Yeah. I think. Um, and, you know, of course, there's a lot of games, right? So there's games every day, but um, even your favorite team is playing, well, you know, five times a week or something like that. So it'll be very interesting in 2021. You know, obviously, some of these stocks have, you know, really had incredible rises already, but, you know, they haven't had the sports behind it. Um, now it'll be interesting to see is, I think people will go back to sports. I don't think anybody said, ah, you know, I didn't have my sports during COVID and I figured I could live without them. <laughs> I think people are still going to go back to being fans and um, and you know if they were playing the games before they're going to definitely play them if they didn't have the opportunity to play them they'll definitely consider playing them in the future right so the fantasy sports and everything else so I think that's a, a very um, interesting theme you know also um, with all the platforms now right so more and more you can see just about probably any game you want I'd imagine you know on your platform on the internet so you've got access to the games. Uh, you know, I think it's a huge, you know, thematic is this, you know, sort of gaming and, and esports. Well, you know, we don't usually like to bring politics into it, and I won't. But the fact is, more and more states are legalizing um, the gaming. And you know, 20 years ago, you know, there's some states just wouldn't ever do it. You know, they they resisted lottery for a long time. I think most states now have lottery. So yeah. I think you have to look at lottery and say, you know, maybe it took 20 years for most states to have lottery, but in, you know, 10, 20 year time window and, and some already have it, you know, will you be able to place a bet on a game in, in most states, most or all states? And then there's, you know, a lot of opportunities. The great part is if you're sort of a, you know, thematic investor and everything else is, um, these are new, like, I mean, this is like, you know, this, these are those, you know, new technologies that pop up, you know, and or, you know, the smartphone, right? So if you feel like you missed out on the smartphone, <laughs> you know, because you didn't invest in Apple and when the I, first iPhone came out, this is your chance, you know, I'm not saying go out and rush out, put all your money in, in esports and gaming, but these things come up every decade or so, these new technologies, electric vehicles, you know, whatever, solar, renewable energy, and gaming, I think is right there. So what do you think about that in terms of, you know, potentially one of those handful, and they're usually less than, you know, five, there's usually two, three, four new things that, you know, really, you know, develop businesses and, you know, over a 10 year window. What are I, your thoughts there? I really think, you know, I remember back, uh, uh, 
side note, we, we, we both love poker. We love, we love some poker, you know, but I remember back in like the 2010s, I believe it was like 2010, 2011, uh, a bunch of famous poker players tried to start doing online poker and, and the government just shut it down. And, and I think, you know, just the demand is just pushing, just like marijuana, it just keeps pushing. And at the moment that, that the government's just concede, it's going to be a, a free for all in, in activity. So I think it's inevitable, you know, if, as long as people want to do it, you know, they're going to, they're going to bet on, on uh, baseball, football, you know, esports. it doesn't matter. They want to, they want to do that. And so with the demand there, um, you have a, you actually, you know, it's kind of a, because of the supply being dampened, you know, preparing for the supply to rise with the government being um, okay with, with online gambling. Um, I think, I think that's, that's the time right now, you know, once, once, once they're okay with it, it's all going to be priced more correctly to what it should be. <laughs> True. And I think, you know, from a investing and trading perspective, you know, very often the, the first isn't always the winner, you know, so, you know, if you think about in the early 2000s, you know, BlackBerry was the king, you know, and, and it wasn't a, you know, smartphone as we think about it today, but it was like, well, you know, it was light years above any of the other phones that were out there. And then the iPhone came along, you know, so I think people would say the BlackBerry was the first, you know, if, if you want to refer to a smartphone, but it was the iPhone that was the long-term winner, you know, and you could say, you know, Samsung, the Android, but they're, they're both second, you know, to, to the BlackBerry. So, you know, when you look at a company like DraftKings right now, it seems to be the number one. But, you know, will we find in two or three years that it's eclipsed by a company that's out there today or maybe not even out there today? Or do they win, you know, and they were first and they're the winner, you know, if you look five years out. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to watch these companies and, uh, you know, keep an eye on it. But I think it, it is a new, you know, it's essentially a new established industry that's not going anywhere except probably up. So we'll see. Absolutely. Well, thanks. I appreciate the insight and uh, thank you guys for watching. Please uh, subscribe and, and check out more videos from us. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff.